Hello everyone, Team and Gaming here and today I have the pleasure of bringing you another one of my football talk videos. Now in today's video I'm going to be running you through the transfer window, obviously it's just closed and I'm going to be talking about the winners and losers, who I think the best signing is and just basically running through because it was a record breaking year for spending in the Premier League, even though deadline day was a little bit quiet, had more failed transfers than successful transfers really, you know, it was still a very very active amount of time and you know, the club I wanted to start off with is Manchester United, obviously, because you know, they were a team that was predicted to need to do a huge amount of business in this window, and they signed one matter for 37.5 million. I think it's 37.1, actually, the precise figure, but you know, one matter unbelievable player. You know, he didn't fit at Chelsea. You know, Mourinho would obviously prefers... Oscar as his number 10, building his team around him for his work rate and his defensive attributes as well as his attacking flair. And, you know, Matt didn't really fit in the style that Mourinho wanted to play, but there's no doubt he's an absolutely world-class player. He Obviously, he won Chelsea Player of the Year two years in a row, which is uh, pretty fantastic, really. So, very, very good signing for Manchester United. The question I have is whether he'll fit in, you know, into the sort of style that they play at the moment. Because basically they play, you know, with out-and-out -out wide players and they have Van Persie and Rooney with Rooney a little bit deeper. And that's sort of the role that Mata likes to play. So it's going to be interesting to see where he fits into that team. But there's no doubt that he's a very, very good player. And I think it's a step in the right direction for Manchester United. So that was obviously the biggest transfer of the window, definitely. And a very, very useful one at that. But I think the club has done really smart business. It's actually Hull City. You know, Hull City have done a really smart amount of business because they've been very, very tight at the back. And when you've got like players like Tom Huddleston and uh, Jake Livermore in midfield, there we go, get his name out, or Jake Livermore. When you've got those two midfield, you're always going to be pretty solid. But they've struggled to score goals. You know, Danny Graham hasn't been successful at all, and he's now. You know, fallen down the pecking order with the signings of Shane Lung and Nikita Jelovic. And you know, Nikita Jelovic really did fall out of favour at Everton for... I don't really understand why, to be honest. Obviously, you know, they've got Lukaku this season, but under David Moyes in you know, last season and the, the last six months of the season before that, he really began to get left out. He started to play a Nietzsche be more or just play players slightly out of position to compensate and Jelovic didn't get a look in. I found that a little bit surprising because when he first came to the club, he was really in form he scored a lot of important goals and I think that's a very very good signing and Shane Lung again great player to have in a lower mid table or a relegation threatened side in the Premier League because of his work rate he will run and chase lost causes all day for you and he'll, he can make something happen from nothing he scored two tremendous goals for West Brom against Aston Villa early in the season I think they're two very very good signings for Hull City strengthening the area that really they needed to strengthen the most there you know, very, very good window for them. I just think it was a pretty good window for Aston Villa as well, which is a, a little bit surprising to say that, because, you know, Aston Villa didn't actually make any permanent signings. There's only two signings made, Ryan Bertrand and Grant Holt, and, you know, a lot of people were a little bit concerned about the window starting off, but for me, I think it's a pretty, pretty solid window, you know. Ryan Bertrand is a fantastic player, you know. Antonio Luna's been a little bit dodgy at left-back, and... You know, Joe Bennett hasn't had a look in much at all this season after a slightly uncertain second half of last season. So I think getting Ryan Bertrand in on loan to play at left-back was a really, really good acquisition. And you know, getting Grant Holt in as well, experienced player. Obviously, Paul Lambert knows him inside and out from his time at Norwich City. Will he begin to show in the Premier League? I don't know, but he's definitely someone good to have around the changing room. You know, a slightly more experienced player. We've got so many players in their early 20s or even late teens. So having someone you know, in their 30s just to get a little bit of experience across it will be useful. And hopefully he'll start to help out some of our younger strikers as well. Players like Hellenius, who we really haven't seen much of this season. And what a shocking miss that was from Lucas Podolski. It's a little bit of a aside there, but... You know, I'm quite pleased with that window. It would have been nice to see some action on deadline day, but two very, very good additions, I think, to the side. Probably the team to talk about next is Chelsea because they were one of the most active in deadline day and they were one of the most active in the window in general. Obviously, the first major signing they made was Nemanja Matic, and I talked about him briefly in a video before, but I'll mention him again now. This is an ideal signing for Chelsea. It's the sort of player they've lacked for a while. You know, that sort of holding midfielder who is also technically gifted because... You know, they've had John Obi-Mikel, who he's a decent player, but he's not the standard 
of like a Champions League winning team, which is, you know, if we're being realistic, that's where Chelsea are aspiring to be. They've won it under Di Matteo recently. They've bought Jose Mourinho back in. And the reason why they've done that is to win trophies. You know, Jose Mourinho is not going to be content with finishing third and getting to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. No chance. So Matic coming in is a really big improvement for them. Very, very technically gifted player. Scored some fantastic goals for Benfica as well as being that holding player. I mean, one of the goals that was up for the Pushcast Award, his volley was just exceptional, absolutely fantastic. And they've strengthened in a, a number of other areas as well. You know, they've bought Kurt Zuma in and then loaned him back to Saint Etienne. Zuma, young player, I think he's only 19, but very, very powerful centre back. And Jose Mourinho always likes his powerful players. You know, and bringing Zuma in and loaning him back out was a good decision. He'll definitely one for the future. Obviously, looking at that back line, you've got David Luiz. You know, Barcelona have been sniffing around him for a number of seasons now. Will he, won't he go? That's a, a question up for debate. But the thing that is definitely uh, correct about that Chelsea back line is that John Terry's not going to be around forever. You know, he's 33 years old now. He's been playing some very, very good football this season. There's no doubt about that. But he is getting to the age now where he cannot go on forever it's just not going to happen you know he won't be playing on his 55 and Chelsea need to prepare for that fact and bringing in a player like Zuma you're getting him early as well getting him in before he gets a slightly bigger reputation all the other big clubs become sniffing around it's a good bit of business for them so and don't forget you know recoup 37.1 million on one matter made a healthy profit on him and then you know invested that into players like Mohamed Salah as well who they pinched off Liverpool and I'm going to come on to Liverpool in a second but you know I haven't seen much of Salah but if Liverpool and Chelsea are after you you've got to be decent and he's more of a, a wide player you know they tried to fit Matter in on the right wing and that's what I mean it didn't really work and if you look at the players Mourinho have been playing you know the Williams and the Hazards they are pacey slightly direct tricky good dribblers and then you've got Oscar in the middle who's the tempo controller the passer you know the orchestrator of that attack so I think Salah definitely fits into that wide player mould a lot better than Matter does so I think it's a style of football that Mourinho is looking to play and Salah certainly fits in with that. So that's going to be an interesting sign to see how he develops because we haven't seen too much of him so far. He wasn't in the squad last week. Will he play a massive role this season or again is that a signing for the next three or four years? We'll have to wait and see. But you know, three very, very solid signings there. Signed Bertrand Traore in as well. You know, Another solid signing. Very, very good window for Chelsea, I feel. You know, they've spent a lot but again recouped a lot as well you know the team that was most active on transfer window day was actually crystal palace and this is a little bit strange for me considering that they have actually the biggest squad in european football and that's not a joke crystal palace have the largest squad in european football Ian Holloway signed so many players in the summer that several players he signed couldn't actually get into their Premier League squad due to the amount of players they had. That was the slightly ridiculous situation about Crystal Palace. But they've seen it as a, another example and an opportunity to get even more players in. And I have to say, some of the players they've signed are very, very useful indeed. You know, If you look at Joe Ledley, Tom Ince, Scott Dunn, Wayne Hennessy and Jason Punchin, they're not you know top half players, but they're solid Premier League players, no doubt about that. So... It shows, again, that Crystal Palace have the ambition to stay in the Premier League this season. And that's the thing. A lot of lower table sides have strengthened in this window. And I think they're very, very good signings because you know, Palace have leaked goals from all over the place this window. And this season, sorry. So having Scott Dan and Wayne Hennessy brought in to hopefully strengthen that back line and have someone like Joe Ledley in midfield, someone slightly more dynamic. Because you know, I like Millie Edenak in midfield for Crystal Palace but he's not going to win you many games on his own so having someone alongside him like a Ledley a little bit more technically gifted will hopefully help them out and again Tom Ince one of the most talented young players in the country not so sure why he chose Crystal Palace looking at all the clubs out there that were after him but hey it's his decision and he's chosen them it's a very very good signing for them and again that's another team who I think have had a very very strong window Unfortunately, there have been several teams that haven't had a particularly strong window. And the first team to talk about is Liverpool. Now, Liverpool have had a great season so far. There's no doubt about that. I still tip them to make top four. They've got arguably the best striker in the world at the moment, Luis Suarez. And arguably the best strike partnership in the country with Suarez and Daniel Sturridge. So... It would have been nice for them to add another player because the way they've sort of been playing this season is with 
you know, Jordan Henderson sort of on a wide right role, and just a general hodgepodge of players. Obviously, Suarez drifts around, but they don't really have a very set formation. It would have been nice to see them add a wide player, and obviously they were going after Yevon Konopilanka and Mohamed Salah, who got pinched by Chelsea, but they didn't manage to tie up that deal on deadline day, even though, you know, Konopilanka had come out and said he was really looking forward to it, and Ian Eyre, the, the te oh, I can't remember his official job title, but the guy who goes out and makes the transfers happen, Ian Eyre, at Liverpool flew out to try and get this deal done. Apparently, the chairman of Dnepro refused to sign the papers, you know, authorizing the transfer. That's the rumor, anyway. So they're going to be very, very disappointed about that. You know, not strengthening the side when a lot of their top four rivals have strengthened hugely. That's a massive deal for them. I, I think they're going to be pretty disappointed about that. You know, it's one of those deals where. You just wanted to see it happen because they'd obviously missed out on Salah, then they'd transferred all their energies to Conor Palanca, and it just would have been a good statement of intent from Liverpool to go, right, we've got this player in, he's the guy we're interested in, we've got him. Alas, that didn't happen for Liverpool, and so they've got to be pretty disappointed with that, and I actually think they're the team that's had the worst transfer window this year. Very, very disappointing for them. Would have been nice to see some players signed. But you know, just moving on to a few of the teams before I run out of time. Another team I wanted to talk about is West Bromwich Albion because West Brom were a team that really needed a few signings in this window, I think, because they'd struggled a little bit this season. Obviously, they'd sacked their manager, Steve Clark, and the new manager, Pepe Mal, had come in in time to try and get something to happen in this transfer window, and it hasn't happened at all for them. They've let go of Shane Long, which... You know, he's been a bit hit and missed the baggies, but like I mentioned, he's a sort of player that you need in these situations. He will always battle for you. Got rid of him, and they haven't really signed anyone to replace him. I don't think they've signed anyone, in fact, not even the loan signings. So it's a little bit disappointing from their point of view. I mean, obviously, being an Aston Villa fan, I, I pay pretty close attention to the, the Villa-West Brom game, and you have to say the defending from West Brom was awful, really was awful. And if you look at the, the goal scoring, you know, they scored one absolute belter from Chris Brunt, you know, a world-class goal. Then the other goal they scored from Yusuf Malumbu was just an atrocious defensive mistake. And then, you know, they missed a host of chances. You know, Diego Lugano was just clown-like at the back. He really was atrociously bad. And, you know, he missed a key chance upfield as well with the, the header he missed. To, to put West Brom, you know, firmly back in that game when he shanked it wide, you know, West Brom were definitely a team that needed strengthening. And now this new manager's come in, He's left with a bunch of players that aren't his own. He's seen a key player leave. And you've got to be fearful if you're a West Brom fan at the moment because they're not playing particularly well. You know, Pepe Mal, will he have the same effect that Gus Poirier is having at Sunderland? We'll have to wait and see. But it would have been nice for them to see a few more players bought in. And for me now, seeing all like seeing Crystal Palace strengthen and Cardiff strengthen and Hull strengthen and Villa strengthen and even Fulham spending you know, 12 million on Kostas Mitroglu, which is a huge amount of money for a team like Fulham to spend. So you've had all of their you know, sort of lower mid-table to relegation threatened rivals invest a lot of money and sign a lot of new players. You've got a lot of clearly glaring areas that need to be strengthened in that team and nothing's happened at all. And that's got to be a very, very worrying situation if you're a West Brom fan. And you know, I put probably West Brom and Liverpool as the two teams who've had the worst window, in my opinion, and probably put teams like, like Crystal Palace and Chelsea as the two teams have had the best window because you know West Brom and Liverpool haven't signed any players, and for completely different reasons, that's a huge problem for them. You know, in both situations, all of their rivals have strengthened. And now they haven't, they've been left a little bit behind and they're relying on the talent they have at the moment to see them through to their goals at the end of the season. When I'm pretty sure that both of them would have liked to have signed two, possibly even three players to strengthen. But guys, thank you so, so much for listening to the video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've enjoyed the game in the background as well. It was a really nice victory. Forced the guy to rage quit at the end. Very, very nice 4-0 win. But once again, thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.